Best tip ever, if you're near the mall, stop in the food court for lunch, and then use the massage chairs before you go back to work. This is awesome. What's up, buddy? Okay, maybe that's not the best tip ever, but it feels good, right? I don't know what else to say in this video. What am I supposed to say? There's no real value that I'm giving to you right now. Good at the job site. Right. I'm gonna show you how to trim an ornamental tree up with these articulating extendable head shears. I got the combi multi-head attachment by Still. I love it. Bear with me, the blades are a little bit dull. I, I gotta get it sharpened so you're not gonna see anything magical happening, but I consider myself one of the best in the world at trimming ornamental trees, and I'll show you why. It's just because I've been doing it so long. So this is great, and I'll show you why. Now when you're trimming, before I get started, these blades should never, ever, ever leave the tree, never leave the shrub. The more amount of time that the contact surface of the blades are touching the shrub is the more efficient and the more you're getting done. So watch the way I trim it and watch the body motions, kind of like a gyroscope, how I trim it. And you'll see. See how I have a slight angle on it? Man, those really need to be sharpened. But as you see, it seems counterintuitive at first to be going like this. But what am I doing is, the way I say it, the lazy part of the mind, say when you're going to undercut a shrub, oh, I'll just get that after, I'll do that after. Do it now. You're not trimming a shrub, you're not trimming a tree, you're trimming, trimming hundreds of thousands of leaves, individually. And when you're present to that and you see it on that level like a surgeon, as I walk around the shrub, like a gyroscope, everything is getting trimmed. I'll go around it twice. First time is rough cut, I'll shake it, and then the second time is, you know, the final thing. And as you gyroscope around it, it turns into a perfect sculpture, and that's what it will be. So watch that again and see, and I do the same with shrubs too. If I'm doing a shrub like this U shrub, I'm literally gyroscoping like this, around the shrub as I go. I'm not going and doing the side and then doing the top and then going back and getting my little undercut. Everything gets done here and now on each swipe and that's how your efficiency goes up, your productivity and at the same time after you complete your circle around that shrub, you know, get it done, go to the next one, it's 100% boom, 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 boom. And another thing I've learned when you do something so long and you develop a point of mastery, it becomes holographic to you. I'm not trimming a shrub, it's just like I turn on the program for shrub trimming and my body does it, almost like a, a robot in a car assembly line. That robot doesn't know what it's doing, it's just programmed to do that. So I follow a shape in my mind and then it just happens. So, what else, what else? Oh yeah, come here real quick, you can see. If, you're, if your blades are too dull, 
and you're trying to trim and you're getting these little tiny things sticking up these vascular bundles, that's when you know your blades need to be sharpened. So I'll give you some more tips soon. We gotta get back to work. Kelpus, yes, I'm in a public bathroom. I'm not gonna use the bathroom for any. But listen, I don't know if I have OCD or if the public is just disgusting, but I want to know if you can relate to this. Whenever I use a public bathroom, oh my god, that's so disgusting. Just think about it. I take toilet paper and I'll build a whole nest around the toilet and put it inside uh, everywhere. So there's zero contact and I'm just like, Ugh, and I hate it. And then whenever I use the bathroom, I'm always like, uh, I get all freaked out when anybody else walks into the bathroom. And I'm like real quiet and I wait for them to get out. And then, every time I wash my hands, I wash the crap out of them. And I take the paper towel very carefully. And I'll use paper towel to open the door. And then I'll like pitch it and get out as fast as I can. And then once in a while, my skin, my finger, even though I use a paper towel, will accidentally touch the metal of the door and I go, damn it! And I gotta wash my hands again <laughs> because I can't stand the thought of it. So, let's see if I can successfully get out of here. Oh, come on. Yeah. We're in the hardware store. Yeah, I wear my glasses indoors. The other day my wife's like, you love those glasses. I'm like, yes I do. Alright. Let's do this. What did you think? If there was going to be some great tip in this video? No, I just wanted to see if you do the same weird stuff I do. Alright, out. Give me fresh, raw, organic broccoli right off the stalk. Or out the window. In Michigan, there's these, uh, in the rural areas, well, not really rural, but it's outside the city. There's these farms with these fresh organic produce right off the vine. So I'm at landscape and I'll stop for lunch. Yep. Blueberries, fresh broccoli. I just ate a whole tomato leaning outside of my truck with it dripping everywhere. Carrots, a melon, cucumbers. Literally, just take a cucumber right off the vine. Eat that. I'm going to up for you. I mean, it's not as good as like a BLT, but here's my point. The reason I eat raw organic vegetables is not because I want to be healthy. I mean, I do, but I'm deathly afraid of disease. I'm terrified of catching or developing chronic disorders and diseases. And that's really it. I do it out of par paranoia and fear. You think a stupid cucumber tastes good? It looks like a bent green penis. <laughs> Why did you see that? It's nasty! But, maybe it'll put my body in a state of alkalinity and I won't get, you know, I don't even want to say it. So I don't die. I don't want to live long and get rich. All right, there's no point to this. So I'm out working, and I see that there's this farm with mums for sale. And they're gorgeous. $6.99 each. I say, you know, I'd like to get a couple for my front porch, or maybe get one for my mother-in-law, and, you know, they're beautiful. And then I think, why do I want to blow money on some stupid flowers? And I go get back to work. When I'm rich one day, then I'll have flowers. But for now, I'm getting back in my truck. And I'm getting to work. Keep your mums. There's a saying that I love in a book uh, by Mike McKellow. It's called Profit First. I just read. It's called One More Day. Anytime you want anything or you look at something, oh, you really love it. Just one more day. Even if it's a tool you need in your business. Like, I've really needed a folding ladder. Uh, t 12 to 16 footer now for a while. Ah, just one more day. Keep pushing it back and you'll watch your cash grow. I want to talk about some of the frustrations you're going to go through growing your small business. Because I go through them all the time. I don't want you to 
watch my videos and think that, oh, this guy's making all this money. He's always happy and smiling. <laughs> no way, dude. I go through some serious emotional panic attacks and dramas and stuff. And it's really about when you mess up on a job or you miscalculate something and you're losing money. Because when you're making money, you're happy. But when you're not making money or you mess up and you're losing money or something, you got that uncertainty. I mean, you are stressed out and anxiety. One thing that really irritates me and pisses me off is these uh, motivational speakers, which I love, and these coaches and these gurus that you read and listen to and talk about. They're always telling you about what it takes to be successful, what it takes to live the dream. you got to have a big dream and all this stuff. But they're not telling you what it takes to get there is you're going to make bad, stupid decisions that are going to make you lose money and it's going to be extremely painful. You're going to have total panic attacks. You're going to be running around chasing your tail and you're going to look like an idiot and you're going to feel like an idiot because you're going to do really stupid stuff. <sighs> we just did a gutter cleaning vinyl gutter installation job. Whole house, 660 bucks. And all Home Depot had was white vinyl gutter guards, so I installed them. The, the the lady's husband got home, and he didn't like the color. He was like, I'm not paying for that. Now, tomorrow, we got to go back and rip out all the white vinyl gutter guards, and i got to track down brown vinyl gutter guards and install them. Why didn't I just ask him what color he wanted? Because I wasn't thinking, because I'm slammed, and I'm trying to get stuff done, and I just made a, a simple mistake that is now costing me so much money that I'm literally doing this whole job for free. Working a day and a half to two days for absolutely for free. <laughs> for free. And you could look at this video right now and watch it and leave a comment and say, you're an idiot. You should be using your head. You moron. I would have done the right. Let me put you in. You've made the mistakes. Don't tell me you're perfect or you'd already be rich. And I know I'm not rich because I'm not at that point yet. Now my buddy sends me a text. Oh, I just made 14 grand this week. <laughs> Isn't it suck when someone else is doing better than you and you get all pissed? <laughs> but pat yourself on the back. Look at how far you've come. I've got to pat myself on the back. Look how far I've come. And you're going to make stupid decisions. You're going to mess up. You're going to lose money. It's going to be pain and suffering. And it's all about how you react to it. If you get to the point, you just see it as numbers. Something you Just get it done. Learn your lesson and move to the next thing. If you spend time crying and whining about it, you're not going to get anywhere. Because that's what it is in business. Alright, cool. Bye.